Welcome to Coachella Valley This Week. I'm your host, Denise Neal, here to guide you to the desert's best events for the week of January 29, 2011. Today we're coming to you from a beautiful gem in the desert. It's Airy Art Gardens in Palm Desert. Today we're here at the beautiful Airy Art Gardens in Palm Desert and I have Bruce and Clenard Thomas with us today and they have generously brought us here to this gorgeous place that they have. How are you guys doing today? Oh, we're doing fine. How are you? Very well. Yeah, it's too bad about this weather. It's, you know, you can't decide whether it's too hot or too cold. You know what it is, and it's it's a horrible, rainy, cold day out here in the desert. No, no, it's actually, you know, we are, we are blessed out here. There is no doubt. So tell me about this place, this gorgeous, gorgeous Shangri-La of sorts. Well, we've built it for years, and we've built it with our theme, Harmony with Nature. So everything you see has to do with that. We have all different sculptures and all different kinds of cactus that Bruce personally has planted over the years, and trees. When we first moved here, it was just a barren hill. And with the art and the wonderful cactus, it's just been a special place to live. Yeah, we've, we've planted all oh, over five, six hundred trees here. I mean, that's a tendency. You, 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 you put in little trees, you go, oh, we need a lot of them. And now we're looking around going, we don't need this many of them because they're big. It's kind of scary when a tree outgrows you, you know. <laughs> when all of a sudden you look at a big, over. big, 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 tall pine, palm tree and you and you realize you brought it in by hand and, and planted it and now it's huge. So. Well, most of them were in one-gallon buckets. So they were small and we've watched them grow kind of our family out here what's wonderful about it is we've built it's really like a park but that just goes with the territory and um, I think both Clenard and I would rather have a fabulous view and fabulous nature around us rather than a fabulous house although we live in nice houses but they're small and uh, and our home up on the hill is a homestead house from 1936 and uh, build very simply, and, but it's really fun. So now tell me about this wonderful place when you began the Airy Art Garden and, and why you started it. Well, it was a joke. We, we started it as a joke or just a, a very ridiculous thing. We were staying out here uh, for a couple of days with, with uh, Clenard's parents who had a place at Marrakesh. And we made up a ridiculous list of things that we wanted. It had to have lots of acreage because we, we were, we, at the time, we had a studio in Hermosa Beach, which was wonderful, but it was in a surfboard area three, three blocks from the beach, and it was a 1,000 square feet, which filled up with just stuff because we were sculpting then and painting, but mostly sculpting. And so it had to be big. It had to be really inexpensive because we didn't have any money, and, and it had to uh, be out of town. That's what we wanted. It had to have views. Yes, it had to have great views. And so this old lady, Mrs. Tomasi, which is very, very, very funny because our last name is Thomas. You know? um, she says she want to be up in the Quia Hills. And she brought us up and showed us places. Um, and nothing looked quite right. And we left our name. And, and on July 27th, uh, she calls and says, There's a, I found your place. And you have to come out and see it. And I said, we're doing the biggest sculpture commission we've ever done for Channel 5 in New York City. And we're flying out this week. And we have no time to go anywhere. She says, you better come out. So I said, Clenard, we're going out to Palm Desert tomorrow. We're going to start at 3 in the morning. We came out at 3 in the morning. We looked at this place. It was locked. So I broke the door and went in. It was in a homestead house that had been broken into anyway. I, I just went in. We looked all around, and it was a wreck. The house was a wreck and everything else. Of course, that didn't stop us. And, and by, by 11 o'clock, we were heading back to Los Angeles, so we'd made an offer on it. And the lady who owned it uh, was an actress-slash-artist-slash-singer-slash... Uh, and her husband was one of the world's greatest guitar players, Al Hendrickson, and he played, um, he, was a, he was a studio guitar player when we knew him at the, at the movie studios. And they lived here and they lived in Hollywood. And she loved art, so the down payment was a, was a sculpture. Oh, which 
is perfect. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so and then we started paying, you know, a whopping, I don't know, 150 bucks a month, and which was a lot of money for us back then, 1978. So then, I don't know. Then, then we, every time we've had a chance to buy contiguous property, we have. So, uh, and it turns out it was a good idea. I mean, I think the homestead area is a really interesting thing because you used to be able to get five acres free right, yeah. from the government in the 1930s to 1950s. And, uh, and now it's actually worth some money, you know. It's changed. And there's, there's no more homesteading, unfortunately. You have to actually pay for it. Um, but <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> so, so now you guys up, up here now, I understand you've done workshops art workshops, photography workshops, and although this is open to the public as far as like um, like corporate events and that kind of thing. Well, we're not open to the public per se for a lot of reasons, but um, we, we will open up if somebody is, is maybe a friend of a friend or if they say they're an artist and they really are, we'd like to have them bring some of their pictures of their work or whatever. Um, or if they say they're a collector or they have some connection in the art world, um, but we have to qualify people because otherwise we wouldn't get anything done. And, and as you get older, you start valuing your time you know, because there's less of it every year. So. That's true. Well, you know what? This is absolutely a wonderful place, and we thank you so much for having us up here. And there's so many beautiful gems in the desert, and this is truly one of them. And we feel very, very honored to be able to be here and, and be a part of this beautiful place. So thank you so much for having us here today. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. If you want more information on the Airy Art Gardens, you can go to www.airyartgardens.com. Now, let's see what I'll be guiding you this week. Check out outstanding art at the world-famous Southwest Arts Festival at the Empire Polo Club in Indio through January 30th with over 255 artists. For more information, visit indiochamber.org slash southwest. Entertainer Steve Lawrence performs at the McCollum Theater in Palm Desert on January 29th. Get tickets at McCollumTheater.com. The Gardens and Alpaseo's Wine and Music Series kicks off on January 29th and runs through April 16th. For more information on the event, go to TheGardensAndAlpaseo.com. The Deaf Seniors Foundation of Palm Springs holds their semi-formal event at the Riviera Resort in Palm Springs on January 29th with dinner, entertainment, and a silent auction. For more information, go to dsf-ps.org. The Broadway and Cabaret Singers, the Callaway Sisters, perform at the Annenberg Theater in Palm Springs on January 29th. For ticket information, call 760-325-4490. Les Originales Encore presents their drag entertainment at Hotel Zozo in Palm Springs on January 29th, benefiting the AIDS Assistance Program. For more information and to get tickets, go to AIDSAssistance.org. The comedy stage performance of The Producers kicks off on January 29th and runs through February 14th at the Palm Canyon Theater in Palm Springs. For tickets and showtimes, visit PalmCanyonTheater.org. The Hot Rod Custom Car Show dazzles in La Quinta on January 30th with prizes, food, music, and so much more. For more information, go to lqchamber.com. The Annenberg Theater Council Speaker Series continues on January 30th with speakers on entertainment. For more information, go to psmuseum.org. Get jazzy with Sunday Jazz at Vicky's of Santa Fe in Indian Wells on January 30th, featuring the Desert City's Jazz Band with special guest Mark Winkler. For more information, visit vickysofsantafe.com. Find harmony with the Lettermans at the McCollum Theater on January 30th. For tickets, visit McCollumTheater.com. Stay tuned for more guides. More guides. 
The play Golda's Balcony, starring Toba Felcha, performs at the McComb Theatre in Palm Desert on January 31st. Visit McCombTheatre.com for tickets. The Mouse Trap Invitational Golf Tournament tees off at the Ironman Country Club in Palm Desert on January 31st, benefiting the Living Desert. For more information on the event and how to participate, visit livingdesert.org. Take a stroll in El Paseo in Palm Desert for their Art Walk on February 2nd. For more information, call the number on your screen. The Backstreet Art District in Palm Springs holds their Art Walk on February 3rd with artist receptions and more. For more information, call 760-202-1208. Spa Tour 2011 leaps off from Cabot's Pueblo Museum in Desert Hot Springs on February 3rd, visiting local area spas including the famed Two Bunch Palms. For more information, go to cabotspueblomuseum.org. The world-famous Viennese Boys Choir performs at the McCollum Theater on February 3rd. For tickets and showtimes, go to mccollumtheater.com. Monty Python's Tony Award-winning musical, Spamalot, performs at the McComb Theatre in Palm Desert, February 4th through the 6th. For tickets, visit McCombTheatre.com. The acclaimed Menopause the Musical takes the stage at the Annenberg Theatre, February 4th through April 10th. For tickets and showtimes, visit PSMuseum.org. Those Fabulous Follies enthrall audiences through May 15th at the Plaza Theater in Palm Springs. For tickets and showtimes, visit psfollies.com. The performance of Always Patsy Cline entertains at the Indio Performing Arts Center in Indio through February 20th. For tickets and showtimes, call 760-775-5200. For more information on the events mentioned on today's show and other fun taking place up in the high desert, visit thesunrunner.com. For fun and interesting articles, you've got to check out the Sunrunner magazine, the magazine of the real California desert. There's much more coming up next on Coachella Valley This Week. A bridge of desert lands, the Mojave and the Sonoran, terrain of ancient bands. Come see the steep and rugged, the wetlands and the fields, the ground and trees above it, and plants well known. Come ease along the boardwalk and bask in scenic views. Come listen to the trees talk as nature takes her cues. Catch a glimpse of wildlife or hike a canyon trail. Come seek a path of solace and see the way prevail. I found my way through the big Morongo Canyon Preserve. Which way are you taking? Good morning, everyone. This is Conrad Vargas, the Old Desert Naturalist, 
Today we are going to Painted Canyon above Mecca. Beautiful scenery here. And I bet you that Renee is going to pan across and get a picture of all of the beautiful hills behind me. The Mecca Hills are basically a clay sandstone type thing. The colors are caused by many, many different chemicals that have come up through the layers from the San Andreas Fault that we're standing on at this very moment. If you see me start to quiver, you'll know that it's because we're having an earthquake. Don't fret, folks. It's not that serious a thing. We're well into the Painted Canyon, and we just stopped here to take a picture of this rock that has so multi colors in it. All of it caused by the San Andreas Fault. And if you look, you may be able to see the uplift in the hills around us, in this narrow, beautiful canyon. The minerals that came up here are what caused the color change in all of this rock. Again, like I said, it's basically a sandstone and conglomerate, and it's just, uh, it doesn't have much strength to it. But it's beautiful stuff. Folks, you've got to come up the canyon and see this. At every turn of the road, you have different colors and vista to see. I must say right now, the road has just been repaired after the enormous floods. And the road has some very soft spots in it, very sandy. We made it through in two-wheel drive, but uh, it's a rough go. But it's still worth it to come up and see the canyon and its beauty. We're at the parking lot here in Painted Canyon. Really, the colors are not as great here as they were down below. But that's caused by the San Andreas, which is now in front of me, behind you folks, where you're watching it on TV. But here we have the, some of the geology from the San Andreas, even though the, the rocks are not near as visible as to the structure caused by the earthquake fault line itself. But we do have new fault lines up in the canyon here that uh, are very hard to see, but a good geologist can point them out. So come up the Painted Canyon, enjoy the day, and again, bring a lunch, bring a friend, but take the trash home with you. I hope it's not your friend that's just trash, but whatever it is, take it home. Coachella Valley, this week's Artist of the Week, is Bruce Thomas from Airy Art Garden. I'm Bruce Thomas. I've always been an artist. I paint every day. On the way down to my studio, there's this bright, wonderful light, and it, and it takes on many different aspects over the course of a day. And it's a different light than you get in most places. It's always been a place of regeneration. You should always have beauty around you as much as possible, I think. It just improves your life. And now, before we actually begin painting, a little academic lesson. 
The western light is very strong light generally. It's from one source, the sun. It's like a big spotlight shining down on us. And we're very affected by how it reflects back onto us and the colors around. So reflected light is what makes all the difference. And this is what will give you atmosphere in your paintings. Understand how warm and cool light and the sun changes the color of this white rock. And that's why I'm using a white rock so you're not confused with it. As you look down here, you will see this, this green board is reflecting up under here on the lower side of the rock. If you look over here, the orange is reflected over here. When I take this blue sky and I reflect this onto the top, you will see blue. We'll start with a little bit of orange, orange in here so as warm. And this is a lighter side than the dark side of it. And I think that if you paint fairly rapidly, you'll get more energy into your paintings. Part of the darker color can be there. So I'm breaking the rock into three planes. The top plane, which is where the light is hitting and there isn't much color. The darkest plane away from the light. And the side that is lighter than the dark side that the light is reflecting back into. The tops of these rocks are fairly cool, but they're very washed out in color. So you don't use much paint. And cool is a blue color or a purple color, but blue is, is the most cool paint color. This will gray it. You should always think of shade as warm. Shade, shade, shade. This is a cast shadow, so it will be cool. Where that meets the ground, there's a little dark area. That will set that rock down into the earth. So now you can kind of see that these rocks do sit down. That's important. You could come in with a little purple in here. That's a color. And believe it or not, you could even come in with a little strong green. That'll make it dark with the red. You can look over there and see where there's some really strong darks that will set things off. Like there's a little chink in this that, that's real dark in there where the rock's cracked. That makes this rock have character. You're always playing warm against cool. That's the artist's game in painting. Warm against cool, warm against cool. And we're just doing it very simply here. Look at you have the idea of what's going on. You kind of put them in fast. I do anyway. I love to paint with some energy. You put it in and you get out. And you leave it alone. I think I'll do exactly that. And that sets the tone for my whole painting. This will dry, because in watercolor it will dry lighter. If it's in oil, it'll dry a little bit darker. So keep that in mind. Maybe you want a little bit more. Maybe I'll leave the light coming through here. I'm gonna add just a little more blue in here. Notice how much water I have with this blue. You can even take water and just run it down and let it go. Here I've used mountains that have light streaming through here and I think I've captured this sort of this strong light that comes through here. 
Now here we're in the High Sierras, which I love to paint. I paint up there a lot in the summers. And these mountains show the gullies, but notice how much cooler these mountains, even though they're right here close to these trees, they're cooler mountains. In this painting, we have elk, beer, and rocks in the mountains. And I put these rocks in the water, and I like to show how the water actually affects the rocks as the water level goes up and down. Incidentally, all these paintings were painted plein air, and I think when you're out in, in the sky and the air and you can see the actual light, and once you understand the light, it's, it's much better than painting from a photograph, although it's difficult, I know. Yeah. So use the best equipment, be comfortable if you're outdoors, and if, you're, if you must paint a studio, go out and look at nature and think about these principles I've talked about and see if you can see this light. Once you understand it, you'll begin to see it. The more you paint, the more you'll see the world as paintings. So my gift to you, hopefully, is that you paint a lot and that your world is full of joy. Now, if you're wondering about the hats, which you might be, never paint outdoors without a hat. You need a hat to sh shade your face so that the colors can be seen. So always, always wear a hat. Also, if you're gonna be a professional artist, you're gonna have to wear many different hats. And with that, I'd like to say goodbye, and I hope that I paint with you sometime soon. If you're interested in purchasing Bruce Thomas's Painting Western Light DVD, you can call 1-775-790-0600, and the cost is $15 plus tax, shipping, and handling. Can't get enough Coachella Valley this week? Then visit our Facebook fan page for current and past shows, photos, and so much more. And remember, like us. If you have a public event that you'd like to have mentioned on our show, contact me at denise at coachellavalleythisweek.com. We hope that you've enjoyed today's show. I'm Denise Neal, and thanks for watching. Catch us next time when I guide you to even more the desert's best on Coachella Valley This Week. Ready for your close-up? Yes, I'm ready.